There's a reason that movies like Locke exist, and it's not necessarily for broad appeal. If you were to recommend to the average filmgoer a movie that features a man driving down a highway in his car for 84 straight minutes with nothing driving its plot besides dialogue from phone calls, I wouldn't say it's likely that they jump on watching it immediately. And that's because Locke, in its very nature, requires absolute patience. Single location films have a way of building character exploration. If you're forced to watch one or even 12 characters for an entire feature length running time, you begin to learn things about them. These types of films have been around for a good while now, perhaps most notably dating back to 12 Angry Men. And while the film itself is great, it can't be forgotten that it's an adaptation of a stage play, and in my mind at least, doesn't exactly lend itself to the conventions of a visual story. I mean all these picky little points you keep bringing up, they don't mean nothing! So what about films like Moon or Buried? They're both fantastic, they take place in single location, involve character exploration, and lend themselves to a visual story, right? But while both fit that same criteria, their stories are much more exciting. Locke, in contrast, fits that criteria but instead is a slow burn, and one that helps to validate an important point in design. Less is more. In the same way that a minimalist artist uses this point to bring meaning to their works, a writer and director can do the same. I believe that Stephen Knight, who served as the film's writer and director, understands this idea and utilizes it to the fullest potential. You really get the feeling that you're with someone that even 20 minutes in, you know them. You're on their side. Each aspect of the film, in both its narrative and technical respects, exists in the simplest way possible. Instead of an ensemble cast or even a small collection of main characters, we're given one. And he isn't a superhero or unbelievably powerful character, he is but one man, Ivan Locke. A man driving from one place to the other not to save the world or the lives of others, but for, as the audience gradually discovers, an understandably small human reason. Uh, something has come up and I need to tell people to say. Sorry, what? All while speaking to off-screen characters in various small discussions. You're the man in charge of the entire operation, but with 10 hours to go, you've decided you ain't gonna be there! Despite its otherwise restrained nature, the film grips you. The lulls aren't noticeable, our main character is interesting, and your attraction to him, especially on the psychological level, is well-founded, regardless of how you feel about his predicament. And what's more, it remains visually interesting, never once becoming bland or flat in its approach to visual storytelling. The less is more approach doesn't need to dumb itself down. A simple, streamlined story can be told while still offering to its audience a dynamic experience. Look at something like All Is Lost, a very simple film with very little dialogue, long and extended scenes, and genuine character exploration. And it works well if you're able to slog through it. Locke does just that, exploring themes ranging from the hostility resulting from the abandonment of a father to the repercussions faced from one single solitary mistake. I'll fix it, and it'll all go back to normal. All from the confines of a car. Locke proves that a film needn't shove ridiculous amounts of content in your face to remain compelling and memorable. All it takes, in the most bare-bones approach possible, is a great story and character. Would you have to embrace that experience and be willing to discover just how a film can work so well with so few moving parts? Because what you find might surprise you. And it's something you may not always find down the street at your local theater.